tonight is um, how God cares for us. And uh, I, I thought, man, how does, how does he not care for us? <laughs> there's, there's so many things. Um, I, where to begin? Um, and, you know, it, it, it links right into, I'm, I'm guessing you, you already had this in mind, Tom, when you, you know, chose this, like, well, all these things we could be thankful for, that's <laughs> how God loves us. <laughs> you know, all these things to be thankful for, we're, we're uh, you know, going to be uh, celebrating Thanksgiving and thinking about all the things that God has given us. You know, you may have less here, but you still have riches in Christ um, through salvation, through the love we have in Him, and the biggest thing is hope. And um, there's, sometimes it's really hard to have hope when, you know, and the storms hit you, and most of you, some of you may know, um, well, geez, what is it, uh, four, four and a half years ago, <laughs> wow, <laughs> four and a half years ago, um, I had to uh, leave an abusive husband, and uh, he was mostly um, <coughs> verbal and so emotional, but was kind of veering on some, some physical stuff he was doing, not directly at me, but enough at me that it was scary, and I had to leave for my own safety, and lots of stuff went down, and I, I just, I, I left, and then I gave him all the chances in the world, and, uh, but I was like um, a sparrow, you know, caught in this big storm, and, but the Lord picked me up when I, I called out for help right away, and, and uh, he's walked with me through this whole thing. And um, help me to heal. I'm even stronger than I used to be. Um, I can make choices a lot faster <laughs> and easier because I've got more, more confidence. I have. I just. It's all to say that God works things out, and you'll come out the other side of the problem. <laughs> um, and, and there's resources there. And, there's things that God does every day that, that shows you he cares uh, along the way to kind of encourage you. And so this poem, I try to encompass a lot of the stuff of what I think when I think of, of God's love. And um, so, yeah, this afternoon, well, starting around 4.30-ish, I <laughs> started writing this poem, and like I said, I was just editing at the last second. Um, anyway, it's just called No Better Love. My heart composes an unwritten poem each time I lift it to God in prayer, filled with such joy and thankful praise as inside and out I sense his care. Sunshine, fall leaves, summer blooms, ocean waves and snow-covered trees. God ever provides for all creatures, yet I know even more than these. When in life I fell like a sparrow in the storm, God gently whispered, I'll give you new wings. Blessed by others, I had courage to heal. Through him, I really can do all things. So thankful for forgiveness and salvation, for no greater love has ever been shown than when Jesus sacrificed himself so that God could save us for his own. The Holy Spirit leads through the word, my heart softened by the Father's love letter. With all these things, I have no doubt God really couldn't love me any better. Good evening. Nice to see your smiling faces. That's a hint. So I'm going to start tonight uh, uh, in Isaiah 55 11. I just want to kind of tell you what, what God starts with, which I just, I just love here. Uh, let me put my glasses on because I am old. It says here, So shall my word be that go forth from my mouth, it shall not return unto me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and shall prosper in those things whereunto I have sent it. I want to start with that tonight because uh, I'm going to do something a little different. Usually I, I, I have a message, I preach at you, yay, we all scream, it's great. Uh, tonight I want to just talk to you about God's word. Uh, the, the message he gave me late yesterday, because I didn't have a sermon, was just share what my word says. Because someone out there is going to resonate and need to hear just the word of God. 
And so I want to share this, this first verse with you, which I just love, if I can find it. <laughs> kind of goes to a little what Ladino was saying. This is out of Matthew 10, 29 through 31. It says, Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, which was nothing? Copper coin wasn't worth anything. And not one of them falls to the ground apart from the Father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are more valuable than many sparrows. And I, I kind of like that because Levinas' poem was talking about God's creation, right? He created all things and created all the animals and created us. But you know, you're the only ones crowned with glory. Scripture says that <coughs> who is man that you would think of him? You, you crowned him with glory and him a little lower than the angels. All of his creation is incredible, but you're the most incredible. And I would go a step further. I, I think God created man, and it's, it's awesome, but there's something incredibly special about woman. Incredibly unique about the daughters of the Most High. And when he says that you're valuable, sometimes we have our time believing that, right? We look in the mirror. We, we, we see what we see. We know. Right? We, we know what we are. But God's word does not come back to him void. It doesn't come back empty. He sends it out to you to tell you, hey, look, you're valuable. I know every hair on your head. I knew your name before you were born. I purposely knit you in your mother's womb, fearfully and wonderfully made. I had plans to prosper you. I had things for you to do before the beginning of time, good works I created you for. You are valuable. Now, here's something else that I get from that verse. He's also proud of you. A lot of times, we don't hear that, that people are proud of us. We hear that God loves us, and that's okay. But he's proud of you. He's proud that he made you. He's proud that he comforts you, provides for you, and do these things. Because if he weren't, what would you do with somebody you're not proud of? Nothing. You'd reject them. You'd send them away. Eh, I'm not proud of that one. Let's try again. <laughs> he's proud of you. He knows every hair on your head. He made you on purpose. And you're loved. And you're valued. Every time. I know it's hard to believe sometimes. But the bottom line is it says so in this book. And either you believe this or you don't. I'm one of those pastors who will tell you that it's black and white. There's no gray. It is or it isn't. Right. And I'm it is. And so God's word will not come back to any void. You are valuable. How about this one? You all know this, Psalm 23. Have you ever really read it? Yes. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I lack nothing. Just stop there. <clears throat> I lack nothing. There, there are days when I feel like I lack things. <laughs> I'm like, well, it should be nice to have this. It should be nice to have that. Like today, I've been really not well. I've been really ill. It should be nice to have some health before I go to Sabaka tonight. <laughs> But here I am, and I lack nothing. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I feel great. I lack nothing. The moment I finish tonight, I will lack a whole bunch of things. <laughs> but right now, God always carries me. And that's how this is. He's my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. You ever just been out in nature and gone, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be a pasture. It could be a... Uh, a mountain, it could be a beach, it could be whatever. I, I dig the beach. Actually, I dig Monterey, California the best. <laughs> that, that's yeah. my place. Remember when I'm, get, when, I'm, when I'm home and I'm not happy, I turn on the webcams for Monterey Bay, and I just watch it on my computer. <laughs> he leaves me besides quiet waters. I got one of those uh, sound machines. You ever have those things that make the ocean noises? Yeah, when they put my baby in there, though. Yeah, just... <laughs> Quiet waters. You know how stilling that is? What this poem is about is we live in a world that is troubled, and sometimes our hearts can get troubled, but God says, no, I lay you down by still waters. You're in a green pasture. I've got you. You're my, you're my sheep. I'm your shepherd. You don't have anything to want for. I'll feed you. I'll take care of you. I'll give you everything you need. I'll comfort you. I'll give you peace beyond understanding. And this is great. It says, it refreshes my soul. 
Who needs that tonight? Oh, yeah. oh man, I need that. I need my soul refreshed. And then he says, even though I walk through the valley of death, that's this place. <laughs> yeah, this is earth. We're all walking through the valley of death every day. I was telling somebody the other day, they were, they were, they were kind of whining about uh, um, how people are. And I said, do you realize that out of every ten people we meet, only really two of them are really, really into God? Or early church goer kind of believers? Maybe even one. So that means like eight or nine people every ten you meet aren't going to be one of us. And they're going to treat you badly. Mm -hmm. Yet, even though we walk through the valley of this stuff, it says, hey, don't fear any evil. I got you. You're covered. Man. You know what that tells me? You're safe. Anybody other than me have issues with safety? Hypervigilance? Woohoo! You're loved, you're known, you have purpose, but you're safe. You're safe. You're safe in his arms. What can man do to you? Right? And again, it's God's word. I'm not making this up. He said it. I mean. <laughs> the Lord is good to those who hope, whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. Do you want the Lord to be good to you? I do. Amen. Because it's no fun when he's disciplining you. Right? I've had that holy two by four a few times. It leaves a mark right around your forehead. The Lord is good to those who hope in him. Now, it doesn't say the Lord is good for those who do all the rules right. It doesn't say the Lord is good to those who do are perfect. Those who no, it says for those who hope in him. To have hope in Jesus, you have to have faith, right? You gotta believe. And the Lord is good to you. I want God to be good to me. Now, i got to admit, I blow it. I do every day. I, don't, I fall short. But God loves me so much, His grace is sufficient for that when I screw up. Pats me on the butt, tells me to keep going. <laughs> you, know, you ever see that kid that falls down, they're crying, ah, you pick him up, you're okay. Bam, go. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what God does to me all the time. And he wants to do good to me. This is the, this is the secret. God so wants to bless you, so wants to do good for you, so wants to give you the keys to the kingdom, so wants to allow you to, to you ever hear that term, to loosen and bind? Isn't that the most confusing thing in the world in the scriptures? It means that whatever you say is okay here is okay with God, and whatever you say is not. You know, if you're a person of God, you can say, devil, that's not okay, you go, and he has to go, uh, because that God's giving you that authority. It's amazing. it's amazing how much God cares for you that he would allow you to do that. I mean, my wife wouldn't even trust me with that kind of stuff. <laughs> if God does. How many have troubled hearts right now? Anybody? Yeah. John tells us in 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And that's Jesus speaking. Now Jesus says, I'm going to give you peace beyond understanding. The word peace in, in Hebrew is shalom. And I think it has a deeper meaning than just peace. Shalom is this concept that there's chaos and God calms the chaos. Anybody felt chaos in their life? <laughs> All the uncontrollable variables, right? All the things that you would like to control, you can't. And they all affect you. And it's chaos. And, and Jesus said, look, I, I have shalom. It's not just peace like, oh, I feel better. It's, it's peace that there's chaos around me and our, our <coughs> Father is going to come down and give us shalom through Jesus. And that's going to quiet down. It's going to be peaceful. So if right now you're having trouble in your heart and there's chaos in your life, understand what this says. You can have shalom. But your hope has to be in the Lord. That's where you get it. You don't get it from, um, have you ever tried your own ways? Yeah. <laughs> I love that look right there. That was awesome. That was awesome. Because you and I were like on the same page thinking the exact same thing. Yes, we have. And when I woke up. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. You might be able to do a short-term thing, but it comes back. 
the chaos <laughs> effect. And actually, by the time you wake up or whatever happens to you, it's swirling even harder. <laughs> right? Especially if you don't remember what you've just done. <laughs> Well, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember, chances are you don't, but you don't need to remember. Someone will always tell you that's the beauty of it. <laughs> Second Corinthians says this. If I can't remember it, I don't want to know what it is. <laughs> Second Corinthians says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. We talk about compassion. I can have sympathy for you. That means if you're going through something, I'm like, oh, that's too bad. <coughs> Somebody's, you know, their, their parent dies, and you're like, oh, I feel sympathy for you. That's sympathy. Compassion is different. Compassion is what Jesus had. If scripture says he saw his people and he had compassion on them. <coughs> he felt their need. Now, empathy is the, 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 the far right part of this where it goes, I have sympathy, I have compassion, I have empathy, I feel what you feel. <clears throat> and when Lazarus died and the sisters came and said, Jesus, where were you? My brother died. And he's weeping. He had empathy. He knew what they were feeling and broke his heart. There are times Jerusalem and Israel broke Jesus' heart. But compassion he had on the people in general. And so when I think about the Father having being a, a God of compassion, anybody right now feeling alone? Anybody feeling as if like nobody cares? And, you, you know, just you're just left out to dry? Yeah. You're not. <laughs> Scripture tells us that he has compassion, he's watching you. If God truly is God, then he's everywhere, he sees everything, he knows everything, you're not fooling him in anything, and he's looking at you going, I hurt for you, daughter. I hurt with you, daughter. And I'm there. You don't see it, you may not feel it, you may not understand it, you may not even believe it. But I am. And his word won't return empty on that. Because he's made you a bunch of promises. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Right? You may be crushed, but not dead. That whole scripture about being perplexed, but not this and that. You know, you may be really struggling, but God lifts you up out of the mire. I will tell you that something that Ladina was saying in her, in her poem that struck me. You have survived 100% of what you've been through so far. Chances are really good you'll survive the next thing. Mm -hmm. yep. And if you look backwards, sometimes it's hard to see God's hand right now, but if you look backwards, you can see God. You can go, woo, that should have gone a lot worse. Right. But God pulled me out of it. God was with me. And then sometimes when you're honest, you go, somebody else's mistake caused me this trouble. They were not being obedient to God, and it caused me trouble. Or I wasn't being obedient to God, and that caused my own trouble. I love this one. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, uphold you. Anybody have a bad reputation? <laughs> I can admit it. You know what? I got no hands that came up on that. Just a lot of laughter. <laughs> I did. You did. I've had a bad reputation. When I used to work in politics, my nickname was Darth Vader. <laughs> and, uh, um, one, one of the things that happens in politics sometimes when you're running campaigns is they need someone to do the hit job on the guy and the other opponent. And you don't want to make it look like it's coming from your campaign. I was the guy they would call. That was my job. I was really good at it, too. Um, but my reputation wasn't the best. But God says here, I will uphold you with my righteousness. That one struck me. I mean, I know that God's with me. I know I'm not supposed to be dismayed or scared of anything. I know that I'm supposed to be, be bold. But he says, look, I'm going to hold you up. And what that means is, um, I'm going to show you're one of mine. See, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we go from being someone who knows about Jesus to someone who knows Jesus. And we go through this transformation. This is what, where you can tell if someone's actually a believer or not. They go through a transformation. They become a new, new creation of Christ. They are born again of the Spirit. They change. See, the deal is you don't have to do anything to come to Jesus. You can be anybody you want to be. I don't care who you are. You can be a murderer. You can be, I don't care. You come to Jesus. Because when you come to Jesus, you'll change. Right. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times in the church, they say, change. You can come to church. 
Now tell Jesus, Jesus says, come to me, come to me. All of you who are weary, all of you who are burdened, all of you, I don't care what you got, come, 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 come. But you will change. He's that kind of relationship. And so will your reputation. People actually like me now at the Capitol. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I used to think they do. <laughs> <laughs> he said, tell me to my face. <laughs> when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Anybody passing through deep water right now? I got this great line that says, Lord, why do you make me go into the deep water? And, he's, and the Lord responded, because your enemies can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> Remember what happened with Moses and the people. He opens up the Red Sea, right? And they're going through, and the chair's like, get him! And uh, then the Lord, and everyone drowned, and did it. <laughs> Sometimes we're brought through deep water on purpose. Not only for our education, but because the enemy can't follow us there. So if you're going, well, all of you, I would say all of you, you're, up, you're here. You're going through some deep water, let's be honest. But your enemies can't follow you here. This is God's house. Right. Right? You're covered by the Holy Spirit in this place. You've got a sisterhood that sometimes works. <laughs> right? No, oh, laughing too hard at that one. Um, you should be lifting each other up, encouraging one, one another, because you're all treading the same water. Right? Yes. right? But right now, your enemies can't follow you here. It's a beautiful thing. This is God's care for you. <clears throat> that you're in this place. With staff that care deeply about you. That people that come in here care deeply about you. And that your enemies can't get in. Of course, unless you're kind of silly, you can open the door for them. So don't do that. <laughs> I believe it's thing we should fix each other's crowns and bring <clears throat> each other down. That's right. That's right. Have you cried out for help from the Lord? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did he answer? Yes. yes. Sometimes he's like, he waits. <coughs> there's, there's David and Psalms crying, where are you? I'm ready. God's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes it's about building faith. Sometimes it's, you're not quite right. Yeah. Right? I, I cried out to God for years with one foot. And my other foot was firmly planted in my life. So I'm crying out to God for healing, and I'm drinking, and I'm partying, and I'm doing all the stuff I'm not supposed to do. And God's like, I can wait. And I'm like, where are you? I think I'm a believer. You're supposed to be here. You're, you're where? And he's like, I know, where, I know where that foot is, Tom. I'll wait. I'm patient. And when I finally said, okay, I started to move that foot toward him. He goes, bang, I got you. Let's go. So sometimes the waiting isn't just the fact that he's trying to teach you something. Sometimes the waiting is you've got to come a little bit closer to him. Mm -hmm. okay. And let's just be honest. We all have our thing, right? We all have our foot in, in, in over here that we don't want to move. That's comfortable. It's all right. He knows. He's not going to forsake you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to do that. The promise is he will wait for you. Our Lord is patient. He wants another parish. He will wait for you. But sometimes if you're not hearing from him, sometimes you've got to ask yourself the question. What exactly am I doing with this foot? <laughs> what am I not giving up? Am I being unforgiving? Am I being judgmental? Am I swearing? Am I drinking? Am I, you know, what am I doing? Because there's something I'm not willing to give up for the Lord. And he's watching, going, okay, okay. But I'm not going to answer what you want until you come to me. Right? Not because he hates you, but because he wants the best for you. He wants the best for you. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain. And all the former things pass away. See, this is the hope part for us. Anybody spent their night crying over something? <laughs> Anybody been in that place where your spirit's crushed? I've talked to enough here, I kind of know. We go through these dark times sometimes. Sometimes we have physical issues that just wipe us out. Sometimes it's emotional. Sometimes it's relational, family kind of stuff. Sometimes, you know, there's all sorts of things that can just drive us into the ground. They just grind us down. 
That's what we're saying here. Don't worry about it. I'm going to wipe all those tears away. You'll be fine. How many of you remember being four years old? Nope. Amen. Five years old? Yeah. Nope. Seven years old? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She came out full of dog. It's amazing. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, remember as a kid, like when you got hurt? You remember sometimes you got hurt? Do you remember crying about it at all? Or yeah. are you better than that? <laughs> or are you like, I sure remember that time I fell down, skinned my knee off my bike. <laughs> you know what? When I did that, my dad asked me if I hurt the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. I had this one where I wiped out on a bike and I didn't have handle grippies on it, and the metal cut me from here to here across my chest, and I was like, ah! and my sister was like, you're okay, and then she took that, that I don't remember what it's called, but it was like, it was like Satan spit, and, and put it on my chest. The red stuff? Yeah, the red stuff. Yeah, my grandma did that to me when I got a cut yeah. on my chest. I call that Satan spit. Sit on the toilet. Iodine. Yeah, She's all, sit on the toilet. It ain't going to hurt a bit, and then she goes, <laughs> That'll make you know you're alive. Uh, but then I thought, oh, cool, I've got this cool, cool scar across my chest. Yeah, I never heard <laughs> I, I remember doing it, but I don't remember the pain anymore. I remember it hurt. <laughs> I'm okay. I, you know, it's not like it's a lifelong scar in my life. Right? We're okay. Every one of us will fall down and go, go and boom. We're okay. And I think this life, sometimes we get so caught up in falling down and going boom, that we forget that all the tears get wiped away. We're fine. You're going to be good. He's just back down and going, no, 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 let's go. I'll kiss you. We'll make it better. That's a guarantee. That, that's not something that we just think is going to happen. This, this is a guarantee. We're going we're gonna to get it. Every emotional scar you have, every trauma you experience, every bad decision that you've made, every bad decision someone else has made, this cost you. God's going to go, you're all right. Go, go. It's not going to last. All that pain you feel in your heart, all that pain you feel in your soul, it goes away. We yeah, have this last one. So important. Jesus tells us, come to me, all who are burdened. Every one of you in here is burdened. All who are burdened. And heavy laden. That would give you rest. Rest. Is there nothing better than rest? Is there nothing better than a good nap? Yeah. Is there nothing better than a great night's nice sleep? Right? Yeah. That's not due to medication? Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, seriously. A lot of people can't sleep. I know a lot of people, I can't sleep. I have to take something to sleep. Some people, I know people that have to drink themselves to sleep or they have to you know, smoke some dope to sleep. I do it legally through a prescription. Because <laughs> I can't sleep. I wake up five, seven, eight times a night. You know how good it feels to get a night's rest? The Lord says if you're burdened, you got things on your hearts. I know you do. Here's the beauty. God does too. And you're worth more than Sparrow. He knows every hair on your head. He knows everything about you. He's, he's searched your heart. He's searched you from the bone and the marrow. He knows everything. Even <coughs> stuff you don't even pray about, he knows about you. He says, come in. Daughters, come in. I don't care what condition you're in. I don't care where you're at. Man. <coughs> Just come in. And I'll give you rest. Because that's who he is. That's how much he cares about you. And you shouldn't be embarrassed, you shouldn't be shamed, you shouldn't feel like, like there's any barrier to you coming to Jesus. Too often we think, well, I'm not good enough, or if he knew that, or I, well, stop, just stop. Mm -hmm. Come to Jesus. He will heal your stripes. He will care for you. And he will create you to be the person that God created you to be, not the one this world that's formed. So what I'm hoping tonight is you've been a little encouraged that the word, not my word, his word, <laughs> tells you how much you're worth. Sometimes you get in a place like this and you start to wonder about your value. You start to wonder about your self-esteem. You start to wonder whether you really are, no one else cares about you. Why, why should you care about you? I tell you, you should care about you because you're made in God's image. Your daughters are the most high. You are loved. You are cared for. You are valuable. You have work to do. 
Don't forget that. You have ministry to do. That God's so looking forward to spending eternity with you, walking with you. <laughs> so let me just pray over you. Father, we just come to you and say thank you. Thank you for caring about us so deeply that you give us Jesus. That you'd say, come to us no matter how you are. Lord, I remember coming to you and I was completely broken. And you still love me. So I ask a prayer for these women that are here, Lord. Search their hearts, the deepest parts of them, their deepest pain, their deep, deepest traumas, and comfort them. Give them shalom. Help their chaos become peace. Lord, help that they understand that there is no barrier to you. That they can come regardless of who they are, who they've been, so that you can create them to be the person that you want them to be. Bless them this week. Give them opportunity to know more about you and everything they do. And even surprise them a little bit with something that they're not expecting. Pray all these things in Christ's name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Tom. Have a great Sunday.